Hi, let's have a look at a few cities. Zurich, Copenhagen, Singapore, San Francisco, Zewolde, and New York. Which of these cities is the most environmentally sustainable? Now, that question is not easy to answer, because which set of measurements should you use to compare them? This video is about city rankings. This is a very popular way to contrast the environmental performance of cities. In this video, I will address two questions about city rankings. First, what is it that these rankings measure? And second, why have they become so popular over the last decade? Here are a few examples of city indexes that rank cities around the globe, including the ones that I just showed you. Now, guess what? All the cities that I mentioned come out as number one in these indexes. Copenhagen even comes out as number one in two of them. So how can that be? How can such a range of cities all be number one? Now, the first part of the answer to that question is relatively easy. All these rankings have a slightly different coverage. For example, the Sustainable Cities Index compares cities around the world. Whereas the, whereas the GDI Sustainable Cities Index only looks at cities in the Netherlands. But keep in mind, these cities normally focus on a handful of cities only. So the Sustainable City Index that is global in reach only compares 100 cities around the world. Now a second reason why different cities become number one in these rankings is that they, is that they rank different indicators to score these cities. The measures include carbon emissions, energy consumption, and air pollution, but also issues such as the quality of life and the state of the economy. Have a look at these two indexes, for example. Well, you can imagine that the possible measures are endless. Often, a final score is developed by colliding individual scores. Now, it goes without saying that if you score cities on different measures, different cities will appear at the top of these lists. Third reason, there are different organizations behind these rankings. Most of the ones that are now dominant have been developed by for-profit for organizations, such as Siemens, Acades, and the Economist Intelligence Unit. So again, if different organizations are involved in these indexes, you will get some differences in the rankings. And last but not least, these rankings present a frozen moment in time. Most of them are published as a one-off. These include widely recognized rankings such as the Sustainable Cities Index and the various Green Cities Indexes. Periodically updated indexes are an exception among these. The Cities in Motion Index is one of them. So in summary, there is no widely agreed set of measures for these rankings. There is no single body behind the rankings and they often present an overview at a specific moment in time, rather than giving us a continuum that would help to understand how cities progress over time. So let's have a look at another question. Why have all those rankings become so popular over the last decade? And again, different issues stand out. First, we humans like to order and rank things. Think of how all areas of industry nowadays have sustainability rankings. For instance, the GRI index that is used for companies and the UI Green Metric World University Index, which is used to measure the greenness and the environmental sustainability of universities. Sustainable and green city rankings simply follow that trend. So second, cities and particularly city governments like to brand themselves as a sustainable city. They hope to attract green capital, environmentally aware citizens, and even tourists by being the most sustainable city in the, rank in the region. These rankings provide them with an excellent marketing tool. Have a look at, for instance, the websites of the city of Vancouver, London, and Melbourne to see how they use their positions in these rankings to profile themselves. 
And third, we should, of course, not forget about the citizens living in these cities. A high ranking might add to their pride of living there, or it may support their choice for a sustainable lifestyle. Also important, many city rankings refer to the selling points of their city. A successful bike sharing program, green parks in the city, or hip areas where restaurants and pubs serve sustainable food are very important for the green capital of cities. These rankings symbolize these green allures and citizens may even question their city governments about why their city scores so poorly. Look for instance at the media coverage that Zurich got for being the number one in the Sustainable City Index. Wouldn't you want your city to get such good news coverage? Now after this video, have a look at how the media is talking about your home city or a city near it in relation to these rankings. What do you think? What do you think about how they report on your city? So let's draw this to a conclusion. City ranking is a real phenomenon and it is rapidly gaining popularity. Now, as I have explained, you need to look behind the scenes of these rankings to understand what they are truly ranking. But still, they do give a general impression of how cities around the world are seeking to become more and more sustainable. Even more, there is some evidence that higher levels of voluntary participation by citizens goes together with higher levels of urban sustainability. Now, particularly city leaders of poorer ranking cities may therefore explore ways of engaging more closely with their citizens to improve their environmental sustainability. Because after all, this may help them to move up in these city rankings.